Hello everyone and welcome back at Coding Boost. Today we start a new series about competitive programming. In this series we want to focus on competitive programming programs and make sure that you will increase your skills and rating in competitive programming skills. First, let's go ahead and open up codeforces.com. This is one of the most popular competitive programming websites and here you can solve a bunch of competitive programming problems as well as you can go ahead and take part in some contests. However, first I would like to, after creating your account, simply by log out, you can click register, pick a handle, email, password, and you can simply register here or you can just use Gmail. Log in here. As you can see, also skips track of the rating over time. The way the rating system works is whenever you participate in a contest, you will get some problems that you need to solve, and according to your rank ranking, you can earn or lose some rating. I advise you not to care about rating too much, especially in the beginning. As you can see, I've been around at Code Wars since 2018. And even my rating really just varies a lot. So my maximum was 2400 and now I'm currently only at 2076. So if you have a bad contest or you can, or you can come up with ideas, it's possible to lose some rating. So don't worry about it. The important thing is that you keep practicing and your skill will go up. So your rating will go up over time as well. So first of all, let's go ahead to problem set. Even before you start your first contest, I would like you to come to this part where you can solve different problems. Here in the problem set you can see a bunch of different problems and if you click on one, you will get an extra problem that you can solve. These problems have a number, different types of problems which represent what type of solution you are expected to do. During a contest, these tags are not available for you, so you need to figure it on your own, but for practice, you can figure it out based on them. If you have a particular skill that you want to improve, then you can do it based on that. So here, in the field of problems, you can add any tag that you want to show, want to solve, and you can also change the difficulty. As you can see, there are lots of other and lots of different types of problems. You can here see the number of solutions, you can see the rating. We sort based on rating and start with the lowest one. So as you can see we have this starting with 800 level, this is the ACS problems and going up we will have the hardest problems around 3500 rating. So first, you need to make sure that you can find your current rating. If you are already familiar with programming, or if you watched our C++ back in the tutorial series, then you will have an understanding of these problems, and you can set the difficulty here. So first, I will just take a look on a really easy problem, and we can go ahead and solve other problems on time. So let's go ahead and open up the first option that we have. So this is a really old problem as you can see. This tells us that the runtime will be calculated differently because it's an old problem. Don't worry about it, it won't affect your solution. So when you have any competitive programming problem, you first want to read the problem statement and understand that it wants you to do. Here you can see the time limit and memory limit. You need to fit in these constraints, and then you can see the problem itself. So let's go ahead and take a look what this problem answers. Usually there is a story, sometimes there is one, sometimes there is, but you need to read and understand it. So if we take a look, so if we go ahead and read the problem, the first thing you want to do is to summarize what this problem wants for you. 
So in this case, this problem asks if there is an integer number between 1 and 100, if it is possible to split that number to two other numbers which are both even, and if we add them up, we get W. And we need to print yes, if it can be divided to false, otherwise we can output no. So, and we have an example input and example output. Here, the example input output, sometimes it's a bit more complicated, so you can, and longer, so you can copy it to your clipboard, and now it's copied. So if we go ahead and open up codebooks, first, first thing that you should do is to take the input. So, we know that we have one integer of W. I usually like to have my variables global in competitive programming because I don't know yet if I want to use it outside of the main function or not. Another really cool trick for competitive programming is this code called ISBase sync with STDO course. You should have this line of code in the first line of the main function every time you have a competitive programming problem. This makes sure that reading and writing the output is slightly faster, therefore resulting in lower time, and it can save your solution if you are close to the time or memory, um, if you are close to the time limit. So, there is only one input, W. By the way, you can call it any other stuff. Usually I like to call my variable n. If I have like just a single number, I usually call it n, even if the statement says it otherwise. So, this is the first step to take the input. And now we are done with the input. Now we want to think about the solution. So, so the short description of the problem is we want a and b, so a plus b equals n, and a, b are even. So we can go back to the problem statement and see if it's true. And there is one more thing that's important. Each of them should get a part of positive weight. So that means that and not zero. So in A and B can be zero, so they are at least two and they are even. And we want to make this. We don't actually need to get A plus B, we just need to know if it's possible or not. So we know that two even numbers always add up to an even number. So if n is odd, then we obviously can do this. And if n if n is even, we can always do, do it, like if we have a equal a should be 2 and b should be n minus 2. This always works, obviously, except when this b, this a is always positive, but when this b is not positive, and the only case when b is not positive is when n equals 2. So if n equals 2, then this doesn't work, otherwise it does. So let's check n equals 2, and this is also already important think about competitive programming. Your solution has to work correctly for every input. If it doesn't work correctly even for a single input, you won't get your results. So you, it will be the same like if you didn't solve the problem. In Codephasis, we have two types of test cases. We have pretest, which are run during the contest, and we have system tests, which are run after the contest. Meaning that if your solution fails on pretest, you will get a response immediately and you can correct your your error. So if you have a wrong answer on pretest or any other issue, then you can correct it and usually you get some point deducted. In got I believe it's 50 points. And then you can solve the problem again and have it accepted. How if however your solution falls on this uh, facing the system test or if it gets hacked, then you don't get any points. Uh, hacking is when you take a look at other participants' code, 
after you solve the problem, obviously, and then you can input some values that you think that the solution may be incorrect, and therefore, if you are uh, right and the solution was incorrect, you will gain 100 points and they will get notified that the solution got hacked, and they have until the end of the contest to fix it. If they don't fix it, then, then they lose the points. Anyway, back to the problem. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, it works correctly for every case. So pay attention to these edge cases. Usually when some variable is zero or one or the minimum value or the maximum value, think about it if it, if it can make a difference and treat the input carefully. So w is between one and 100. So we need to worry about this edge case when it's equal to two. When it's two, we obviously can divide it by two positive even numbers. So our solution will be, our final solution will be, if w, or in our case n, is even and not true, not two, then we can do it, otherwise we can't. So if n is even and n is not two, then we will output yes, otherwise we will output no. One more thing that in computer programming time matters, if you submit your solution faster, you get more points. So you want to make sure that you know some shortcuts that make you, make you write the code faster. In this case, we will replace this if statement with simply one line of code. The question mark operator. In the question mark operator, we will have an expression like this in this if statement. Then you will have a question mark. Then you will have an expression. What to do if this Boolean expression here was true? This is the true part. Then you will have a double dot. And then you will have the else part. So this is the same code like this, but it's much, slower, much faster to type this. So this is the question mark operator that you should know about. Also, we can get rid of the C outs because there are two of them and put it here. Just make sure that you have the records between here. So now we will be done it. And we will take the example input. And that's so is yes. And let's say that we want to test our edge case when it's two, when it's no. And then we will test one more when it's one, when it's no. So it works correctly. If it's token, too confusing for you like this, you can keep the code with the C outs here as well. It's up to you, which one is more comfortable for you here. You need to type slightly more, but in my opinion, it's a bit more readable like this. But it's really up to you if you want to do it. And remove this. And once you are done, you need to go ahead. And here, you can Submit your code. Check. Just click on Browse. Here, you will go to the folder that you have your code in and click on the CPP file twice and then you will add it here. Then you will click Submit and it will submit your code. And now you can see all of the previous submissions, and now you will get the result that it's accepted. So that's how you solve a competitive programming problem. Now let's go back to our problem set. So you can search problems by this. And I prepared a binary search problem here that I found on this page. This person to together, which is a really good example of binary search. So let's go ahead and read the problem. So in short ways, we will have n players and 
we will have all the power of those players and we will have a d value which will be the opponent's team's power value and we want to form as many teams from the players as possible and any, every player can be part only for only one team and in a team the power of the values of all the team members will be equal to the power of the highest valued player on the team and we want to beat this other team as many times as possible and we can beat them if our power the sum of powers is strictly greater than t so first let's go ahead and take the input so we will take n and v first which will be a long long type this time I like to use long long for instead of integers every time because I'm not sure or yet if they will fit into the integer limit and if you don't want to think about it every time then it's better to use it as a long long and then we will take the power and push back to the p v array vector so we will have vector of long longs v now we have all the input values now we can start to think about the solution and how to solve this well we don't know the solution yet but we want to find the minimum answer and the maximum answer so we will have an answer and we will have a small and we will have a big so a small will be zero this is an estimate that in each case the answer will be at least zero meaning that we can always make at least zero teams that beats this team this is like a fun trick but it's actually really useful to have a minimum value and a maximum and what's the maximum value? well every member of the team can be part of just one single team so the maximum value will be n what is this good for you? that we know that the answer is between the small value and the big value and now we will do something called binary search why small is not equal to big we will take the middle of them which is small plus big divided by 2 and if we will create this ok function that will return if the problem can be solved by this medium value meaning that if we can make this many teams that beats the other team or not if we can take it then the answer will be at least so we put the small value to this medium value because we know that we can create as this many teams otherwise we will put the big value to the middle minus one because we know that we can't take this and do this anymore and now of course we can replace this with the question mark operator so ok it question mark if it's true then we will execute this if it's false then we will execute this expression so we can get rid of this and this is so much more simple now one more thing you need to worry about in binary search is the case when we have the small and the big right next to each other so for example small is 4 and big is 5 the reason for this is that the medium value then will be equal to either small or false or, or small or big the way you can control this is that if you type the medium value like this small plus big divided by 2 then when they are next to each other you will have the small value as the medium and if you want the big you will have the plus one here the reason this matters is that if you execute this code when you have the medium as a small value then you will make the small value be equal to the mid value which will be itself the small value and the big value will be equal to medium minus one which will be small minus one so if 
you execute this and you have the small value as medium and you set the small value to the medium value because this okay small function was true then you will have an infinite loop because you don't change anything and then you will keep going in the same loop over and over again so for this you can do two things first you can either check what happens when you call this for the small the me medium will be the small value or the big value so here the, if it's the small value it's bad it will be an infinite loop but if it's the big value then if the oak mid, which is the big, will be true, then the small will be the mid, which is big. So small will be equal to big, so they will be equal. That's great. Otherwise, big will be equal mid, which is big, minus 1. So big minus 1, which is the, actually the small value. So it's great in both cases, so we don't have to worry about infinite loop. Sometimes you need this, sometimes you need it like this. You need to think it over. The other thing you can do is that in the while loop, you say that big minus small is larger than 1. And then here you do either of those things, you can do plus 1 or not, and then here, if small not equal to big, then now you know that the small is and the big is just one away. So if ok small, then you can do something, or if ok big. So you can make the logic here as well, but ultimately you need to check that those two cases. So in this case, if we ha have the higher value as okay, then answer will be big, otherwise answer will be small. But because you need to think about it either way, I like to get the solution here and have this small not equal to big. So after you are done with this loop, small will be equal to big, and that will be the answer. So if we suppose that this OK function can determine if we can make that many teams or not, then we have the answer. So answer will be small or big, it doesn't matter because they are equal, and we can output answer and then put a line break. So I usually like to put a line break even if it's just like one case, but you don't have to, you can just output it like this. So we will have this sorry bool function okay which will have a value inside and by the way how many iterations does it take to get the answer how many function calls do we need so for this if we have we define our range as big minus small plus one actually this is the number of possibilities and in every time we will have this number cut it in half because we will take the number from the middle and it will be either the small part or the bigger part but it will be the middle so it will be the half of it meaning that if we have range is 2 then we will have one iteration if range is 4 then we will have 2 iterations and so on if it's 8, then we have 4. So if it's 8, we have 3. And if it's 16, then we will have... So let's just say that we, we have to the power of x, then we will have... To the power of x, then we will have x iterations. Meaning that if our initial range is x, then... Or let's just say that because we used x. Already, then we will have the base to logarithm of y. And why is this good? It's because this time complexity is much, much lower than even linear time complexity for the variable y, meaning that the y can be even 10th to the power of 18th, and you will get your answer in really just a few iterations. So, just to set an example here and is maximum 10 to the power of 15 so this will be at least log 2 10 to the power of 5 yeah, 10 to the power of 5 and this is the log 2 logarithm and this is about, uh, around 17 
corrections. So it's really low. So in this case, we can just execute this awk function 17 times and we will get the answer. And even if it were 10 to the power of 10, then it's 34 because it doubles. If it's 10 to the power of 15, because it's suppose already a really high number, it's 51. So you can increase this value a lot and the iterations will increase just a tiny bit. So this is a really good tool. So inside, uh, OC function now we just have to determine if we can make a, make this many teams. Actually, I will name it number of teams with these powers. Now, what we want to know do is here in the beginning actually sort the values with the sort function. So this will put the values in increasing order. And if we want to put them in decreasing value, then we can reverse them like this. Another way to do this is instead of the begin and end, use the air begin and air end. So this we sort in reverse, or we can sort normally and then put them in reverse. I will use this because this is just one line of code. So if you want to sort them in ascending order, you need to type this. If this ascending order, then you need to type this. So we will have the higher value first, if we have the air begin and air end here. So now we have the higher values first and then after. But so how do we know if we can make that many teams? So we know that the power of a team will be equal, all members of the team power will be equal to the power of the highest pin. So two things matter in a team, the highest value player and the number of players in that team. Obviously, we want to create this many teams to solve this problem. So obviously, we want to create this many this number of teams, and that's why balance stage is really good because in the beginning of our problem, we don't know how many teams we want to create, and with finally search, we can actually have this information already, and we just need to determine if we this can be done. So we need this number of teams, and because we need this many, we obviously need each team to have a cap team. A cap team will be called someone who has the highest power. And the best way to choose the captains is obviously have the most powerful players as captains. So we will have the first number of teams, people in this V vector, be the captains. First of all, if V dot size is less than number of teams, then we obviously they return false. Otherwise, we can have a captain for every team, and we are going to follow. for the all the teams, and when we have we are in an iteration in this follow, we will set a team. So this will, team will have a power which will be the power of the team leader and we will multiply it by the number of players in the team. And we want this to be larger than t. So we want power times Let's just say that M, where M is number of players, at B larger than D. And we want, obviously, to use as little players as possible for this. So, power times M is larger than d, and most of the times it's good to mathematically take this to another part because we know power, we know d, but we don't know m, so we don't want this m to be in the one side of the equation and power and d on the other side. So we will see, say that m should be less, should be higher than d divided by power. 
remember that this is a regular division, not just an integer division. So we need to be careful about. We can just type this in our code. So it needs to be strictly higher than d divided by power. So m should be larger than d divided by power. So we will have an m. And actually, what we can do is I have the work is here d divided by power plus one. This will always be the case. Now we need to check two cases if d is divisible by power and if it's not. If d is divisible by power, then this integer division will actually return the correct value, which will be an integer. But in that case, because we need to, to be strict higher, we need to add one. And in case that d is not divisible by power, then this value here, d divided by power, we put the lower bound, but we want the upper bound, so in this case we will get the upper bound. So in both cases this will be correct. Maybe you will, in other problems, you need an if part, where if d is divisible by power, then you do something, and otherwise you do something else. In this case we don't need that, we will have this m value. And one more thing that we need to do, do is define the extra play, number of extra players. And the number of extra players will be the size minus the number of teams. Because this is the number of team, teams, is the number of team leaders, and everyone else is an extra player who can join any other team. It's important that this v.size is an inside integer, so if the number of teams were to be higher than this, then we would get an incorrect result here. In, so I will go ahead and cast this v.size to long long. Of course, in this case, we already checked that part, but I like to be consistent about it, so it never gets an error. And here, we will decrease our extra players by m, because m minus 1, sorry, because we need that many players. And also here we need to make sure that m is at least 1, but because this is a not negative number and this is plus 1, this will be at least 1, so we don't need to do anything. If for some reason you want, still want to do it, if m is less than 1, then m should be equal to 1, like this. Or you can do m should be equal maximum m and 1, but because m is long long, you need to cast this one to long long as well. But in our case, it doesn't matter. And so we use these extra players, and what we will return is if we have at least zero extra players left. Because if we use more extra players than we have, then we can do it, otherwise we can do it. And that's it, we have the function, we can call it we haven't done it, and take the example input, copy it, and here I made an error, in this sort function you don't need to type v.sort, just simply sort and then have the v.l begin and v.l end, or v.begin and v.end. So we will call it find, and that's the way, and we can see that our output is 2, which is the same as here. So now we will go ahead and submit it. You can see it's in queue, and it's running on the test cases, and it's accepted. You can see that our time is pretty low. So these are the basics about competitive programming. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.